Jeff Braum making this short trip from West Lafayette to Indianapolis as he takes part in the Big Ten Media Days, entering season number five at Purdue. Some of the Boilers got off to a really good start last year before losing a few close games down the stretch. They returned quite a bit from last year. Have a new defensive coordinator in Brad Lambert and a couple of superstars in David Bell and George Karloftis. Jeff Brom, kind enough to join us now. And coach, let's start with last season. And I think we all acknowledge it was such a weird year on so many different levels. And yet you got out of the gate really strong with two key wins and then down the stretch lost a bunch of close games of four games by a total of 27 points those are coin flips those are games that could go either way how much do you take from it given how unusual the circumstances were do you just put it aside or do you say hey there are things we can learn from this and, and here's what they are actually there's a lot for us to learn from last season really we got in half a season six games did get off to a good start didn't finish well uh we do feel like we were in every game with an opportunity to, to finish at the end and win and we're not able to do that so you know we wanted to go back and learn from our mistakes starting with myself and working our way down and there's plenty of mistakes that we made that we want to make sure we um, you know identify first work hard in the off season to improve upon those and that's what we've been doing to this point but i really feel like that uh, our guys are hungry they want to go out there and compete we're looking forward to a great schedule and opportunity this year to play a lot of great opponents and it's up to us to go out and prove ourselves i think one of the things you have identified to need to get better is the offensive line. How have they progressed through spring practice and how do they compare to maybe some of the previous offensive lines? I think our offensive line will improve and get better. Uh, you know, they work extremely hard. They give us everything they got. I think when you talk improving the offensive line, it's really more than them. It starts with the play caller who's got to do a better job and making sure we take care of those guys and we give them an opportunity to come off the ball and knock people back. Uh, rely a little bit less on the passing game, even though we still want to be aggressive and take our shots and attack vertically up the field. But we do want to have some balance, and I think our offensive line uh, wants to go out and prove themselves. As you know, they take a lot of pride in their work. Uh, we have two offensive line coaches this year. We went ahead and did that. Uh, you know, you have five guys that you have to coach. We have two guys I've worked with that have a lot of experience, work extremely well together, and I wanted two sets of eyes on those guys that can actually coach them on the field, within the rules, uh, meet with them in, in the meeting rooms, go over things in detail, and really spend quality time helping that unit improve. Were there any things you needed to tweak from a coaching standpoint as you get, prepare this team to get ready for this season that you identified in the offseason? Quite a few things. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it starts with myself and I think uh, – you know, offensively developing that balance and the ability to, you know, still score points, but also, you know, utilize the run game and whether it's uh, short yardage situations or, or, or for sure run situations, we got to be able to, to knock people back and run. And sometimes maybe that's being a little more creative and sometimes that's coming right at them. I think uh, defensively, I want to take more of an approach where uh, I'm more involved, we're more aggressive in our style of attack. We're trying to play offense on defense uh, by taking more chances and allowing our guys to you know go for the interception go for the pass breakup try to get the sack blitz off the edge guard things tighter even when we have a deep third making sure that we're allowing those guys to play more and, and not just be scared to get beat over our head and uh, you know special teams needs to improve as well we gave up some big plays there we can't allow that to happen so we've worked hard now we just got to go out and execute it how hard is it with another defensive coordinator making the change. Can you get most of it taught during spring practice or did you get most of it taught? We were able to start spring practice early since we ended our season early, only playing six games. Um, you know, we've gone back to the terminology that I wanted to use, and you know, we have three uh, co-defensive coordinators that I that I brought in that are all great people, have a ton of experience, have all been co-coordinators, some of them, bit, two of them have been head coaches, uh, really I think bring a lot to the table. I wanted to get a room of a lot of ideas, a lot of people that were able to collaborate and work together to put the best uh, schematic system in place to allow our players to play aggressive and free and that were good people that wanted to uh, you know, help our players improve, be there for them through the good and bad times, be able to adjust and adapt as you go through the season. Maybe things aren't going the way you want and, and have that maturity level uh, that you 
you're going to figure it out together and you're just going to swing for the fence every time you step on the field. It's interesting because you said that the opportunity to play free. Were you able to notice that when you turned on a practice film, when guys are running around, have an ability to go out and make plays? I think so. We've had a couple guys stand out through spring practice that we feel like have had a great summer. Corey Trice is one of them at the corner position. I think he has a chance to really make a lot of plays. He's a 6'3 corner uh, with a lot of size that can do some special things. We want our safeties attacking down the hill or d downhill better. Uh, we want to be able to uh, you know, get after the quarterback and make him feel uncomfortable. That's one thing I, I, I definitely want to do as a former quarterback. Uh, if you're back there and your jersey's clean, it's, you're probably going to have a good day. So we want to do all those small things, let our players go for the big play, make plays. And then you know what? If we give up a touchdown, then it's up to the offense to get it back. Mm. Coach, it is really interesting what you said about the defense and the way the defensive staff works. A little unusual, I think. Is that because that's what you've done on offense all the years you've coached offense? Is that where that idea came? I, I think that's one of the reasons. Uh, you know, I do believe uh, no matter who the play caller is, you want to have a collaborative approach we have on offense uh, when you put the plan together. You know, I want people to give me ideas when I'm on offense, be able to stand up to me and say, no, coach, that's not going right. to work. Let's do this. <laughs> and, and some people don't, but I, I'm, I'm fine doing that. My wife tells me what I'm doing all the time, so I'm used to it. Uh, but on defense, I think we have a lot of knowledgeable guys that have yeah. done a lot of great coaching throughout their history. I think they're going to work together well. I thought I, th I think they're going to work as a good team, and I think that's when it's fun when you when you have those personalities uh, that are willing to lay it on the line and take responsibility uh, for what you're doing in that room. That's great. You mentioned wanting to get more balanced on offense, and again, you didn't run the ball particularly well last year. You talked a little bit about it from an offensive line point of view. You mentioned it from a play calling point of view. You didn't really mention the personnel in the backfield. How do you feel about the running back spot? Uh, we have seen, you know, at times, Horvath certainly has had some moments for you. King Doru, I know, is someone who we've seen flashes from. Do you feel like you have enough back there to, if you are better on the line and if you do call plays differently, to have an effective run game? Well, I think with Xander Horvath, he gives us everything he has. He's a hard worker. He's strong. He lives in the weight room. He's actually pretty agile as far as hand and ball hand-eye coordination catching the ball out of the backfield he can make some athletic plays is he the shifty runner maybe not but he runs strong and he gives us everything he has king doer has played a lot of football he was injured last year but he's kind of very similar uh more of a physical back that uh, can get us some yards but is he does he have that shiftiness breakaway speed i don't know so maybe we're missing that component a little bit but those guys give us everything they have we need to utilize them we need to trust that they can get yards we maybe need to do a few creative things to get on the edge and, uh, and get the quarterback involved more than we had in the past. So there's a lot of things that we want to work hard and improve upon. But depth is an issue, but I feel like those two guys can do some good things for us. At quarterback, you have two guys who started three games last year. It's pretty unusual to come into a season with two returning quarterbacks with an equal number of starts. Obviously, there were a lot of things unusual about last year. But in Jack Plummer and Aiden O'Connell, how are you going to kind of have it play out here? And what have you told them about the competition entering the fall? Well, our first two years, we had David Blau and Elijah Sindler. They played pretty equal, and uh, they, they, they came in handy when we needed somebody to step in and play. They had experience. They were confident. I think with Aiden O'Connell and Jack Plummer, both guys have played and won games. Do they need to con continue to improve and get better? Yes, but they give us a little bit different element in their game. I feel like we have Austin Burton, a transfer, a Michael Lamo, a young freshman, four guys that we feel confident that can do, go in and good, do a good job. We just got to make sure we take a little pressure off of them, get better around them, give them confidence, do things they're good at. But those guys work extremely hard. Uh, my brother Brian does a great job with the quarterbacks, and I really feel like they can play at a high level this year. Coach, there's been some changes in the preseason rules. Are you comfortable with it? Does it change what you've done in the past very much? It's not going to change us a whole lot. Uh, you know, I think uh, taking care of your players, getting, getting them to the game is important nowadays, right. keeping them safe and the concussion things that go on. For us, you know, there's certain playmakers we can't lose, so we've kind of been probably a little more cautious than some other teams. But, yes, you want to get your physical work in. You want to make sure your guys are ready for the game. But taking care of our players, adapting to the rules, we're going to be completely uh, open with, and we probably have done that to this point as well. Do you feel good about where your team is from a vaccination standpoint? 
I feel like we've done a good job. We've done a great job of educating them, making sure that we continue to give them the latest information uh, that they can utilize to make the best decision for them. We brought the numerous people. We brought the vaccine on campus over to our facility, uh, and we're getting close. I think uh, hopefully by the end of July we can get close to the 90 percent uh, range for for our football team. But uh, you know, we'd like for all, them all to be safe and and uh, their families to be safe. So we're we're definitely recommending it. You have two superstars on your roster in David Bell and George Karloftis. What's the balancing act as a head coach? And, and I think, you know, you you saw this, uh, you know, over the last couple of years with a player on your team who was getting a, a, a ton of mention in Rondale Moore about being a professional and kind of trying to figure out, okay, well, I'm a little banged up. Do I come back out on the field? What's kind of that balancing act with those guys of saying, hey, look, there, there's something big coming up for you. But you're here now, and, and you got to come out and, and perform. Well, in today's age of college football, you want to make sure you take care of your players, and you got to listen to them, and you got to do what's best for them. Yes, we want all of our guys to play, get out on the field, and uh, we, we tell and encourage them, hey, every time you step on the field, it's an opportunity to showcase what you're all about, and you're only going to be as good as your last game. Uh, I think David and George definitely have done everything we asked. They're very unselfish players. Uh, David came in when we had Rondell Moore and set to the side a little bit and allowed him to do his thing. He got injured game four. David came in after that, led the big team in receiving just by playing mostly those last games. Both are very unselfish players. I think they've worked hard to get healthy. I really feel like they're doing a good job, but we want them on the field as much as we can. Jeff Brown, the head coach of the Purdue Boilermakers. Coach, really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. I know it wasn't a long journey for you. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But I hope it was a rewarding <laughs> we'll one anytime. <laughs> the Purdue Boilermakers made the short journey from West Lafayette here to Indy. A journey they are hoping to make again in December. Side of the Big Ten Championship game here at Lucas Oil Stadium. You see George Karloftis, Jackson Anthrop enjoying the scene here. Open with a Power 5 opponent, Oregon State, a game you can see on FS1. Have a game against Notre Dame. Of course, an in-state battle before opening conference play against Illinois on September the 25th. So that is what is ahead for the Boilers. But what is in their immediate future, at least the three guys with me, is a little chat about the season ahead. Really glad to have George Karloftis, David Bell, Jackson Anthrop with us. Guys, let's start with this. Last year was an interesting one, I think, for everyone. It was such an unusual season throughout the entire sports world and college football. You guys got out of the gate red hot and then lost a number of close games there down the stretch. As you try to put last season into perspective and head towards this season, George, what do you think? How do you kind of categorize last season's results? Yeah, well, you know, I think just like you said, you know, last year we came off to a great start, and then we kind of slowed down for, for a very different amount of reasons. You know, so this offseason we've really focused on getting after it in the weight room and getting after it on the field. And, and you know, that, that is so we could finish games, and that's been the, that's been the thing. So we got to win, and we got to win now. And how we do that is by finishing those games. You talk about getting after it in the weight room. You were saying you were at the facility at 445 that, this That's morning? correct. That's correct. For how long of a workout? About an hour and a half, then get some treatment afterwards. Wow. Are you guys there too, or was it just him? Nah, he was on a solo yeah. act. Yeah, nice. <laughs> solo act. <laughs> that is, I mean, that's remarkable. That that's dedication, no doubt. David, close games were clearly an issue last year, and, and so on one hand, that's good, right? You know, you're not that far off, mm -hmm. and, and you're really close to where you need to be. On the other hand, you got to figure out a way to win them. So, how do you win them? Uh, I think we could just uh, build off those two games we won versus uh, Illinois and Iowa. Uh, as you can see, you know, we was putting up good numbers on the offensive end and on the defensive end too. But I think, you know, what you said with the COVID protocol, they kind of took of a, a downwind not only on our team but just the mental aspect of it. I think mentally we were out of the game, but I think coming into this season we were well prepared. Like George said, we've been working working hard in the weight room. Uh, we have plenty of guys stay after practice to uh, better their craft. You know, I've been working with a handful of receivers just to – do a little better so they can be better in, the, in their game also. So I just think this is our year. Jackson, how tough was that last year just mentally? Uh, David was talking about the COVID protocols, guys being out for extended periods of time. How do you kind of try to keep it together in a situation like that? Yeah, it was very tough because you didn't know who you would lose one week. You know, everybody one week would be there, and the next week you'll be missing two key guys. So, you know, that can be pretty difficult, and it'll take a toll on you just because you don't know what the future can hold. But Hopefully this year we'll be a little bit better about everything. Jackson and George, you guys both had some injury issues last year. Give us a sense of how you're doing physically. And Jackson, we can start with you. Yeah, I feel great right now. Our training staff and our strength staff, they've been doing a great job getting us ready. Uh, last year that was just 
it was tough because that was the first major injury that I've ever had playing football. So getting to work through that and getting back as fast as possible was, was key. How about you, George? Yeah, you know, I'm ready to go. You know, I've spent countless hours in the training room with Ryan Lucan and weight room with Coach Dominic Reno, just getting after it, getting my body right, and I'm, I'm ready to go, ready to get after it. You have a new defensive coordinator in Brad Lambert. Give us a sense for what we can expect in terms of style of play. You can expect us to get after the quarterback. You know, we're going to attack. We're, we're a very aggressive defense. We're going to bring pressure. We're going to get takeaways, turnovers, and uh, make big plays, change the game. That's what we're going to do. David and Jackson, what have you guys seen from this new look defense in the spring? Uh, just going off of what George said, you know, they gave us a little tough time in the spring with bringing pressure, uh, throwing different defenses at us. But, you know, I think the, the better they are in practice uh, and the better they get after us, it help us and prepare us for the game. So I think what we see against them, you know, we'll see against teams like Wisconsin, uh, Iowa, that, that's such a nature. And I just think that prepares us properly. Jackson? Yeah, they gave our guys up front a lot of different looks. You know, they kept us on our toes. And, you know, there were times where we had to get open a little bit quicker than usual just because George was coming and we had a whole bunch of other guys that were barreling, barreling down on our on our quarterback. So just being able to see those looks and prepare for the upcoming games, especially, like they said, against Wisconsin and Ohio State and Notre Dame, you know, those are some big games coming up. So just being able to see that is going to prepare us well. There is always a huge emphasis and interest on quarterback play in college football, and you guys have a really interesting situation with two guys who started three games last year, Jack Plummer and Aiden O'Connell, both back. The You guys are the receivers, so you work with those two each and every day. Give us a sense of the strengths of each one of those players, David, starting with Jack and, and then Aiden. What, what makes each one of those guys go? Uh, I think the difference, you know, Jack brings a more mobility uh, to the offense. You know, he can extend plays and give us a little bit more time uh, just to get open. And then with Aiden, you know, uh, perfect ball everywhere, uh, always right time with the receivers, stuff like that. Uh, not taking anything away from Jack. Jack did the same thing, but I think Aiden just may be a little bit better at that. But both of those guys, whoever uh, Coach Brown is designated the starter, uh, both going to give us a perfect Jim, opportunity to win. I'm sorry, Jackson, how about from your point of view? Yeah, just like what David said, Jack can really extend plays with his feet. Teams have to prepare for that, so that's something that's always good to have. But, you know, Aiden will go out there and he'll, he'll put it right on you. He throws a very catchable ball, and, and so does Jack. But, and, you know, and they have the locker room, too. Like, everybody loves those guys. They come out, they work with you, and you know, Aiden and Jack, those are some of the last guys to come off the field at the end of the day. Jackson, as I was preparing for this, I thought to myself, man, Jackson Anthrop's been around a long time. <laughs> Does it just seem that way to me, or is that the case? And, and then I, I noticed this is your sixth year yes. at <laughs> Purdue. So you, it wasn't just me. No, it's and, not you know, just you. You know, there's a lot of Anthrop's <laughs> who've come through Purdue. So I was like, well, you know, maybe I'm thinking of Drew. or, yeah. But no, six years. Yep. What's the biggest thing you've learned outside of football in your time on campus? Just being able to overcome adversity. You know, there's been a lot of things on the field and off the field just – Growing up, being close to family, just becoming a man, learning different lessons from Coach Parker, Coach Hazel, as well as uh, Coach Shepard and Coach Brom, just seeing different perspectives and just getting their their you know look on life, whether it's football or outside of it. You know they they make us into men. You know their fathers off the field and on the field. So it's always good to have those guys in your life. You have such a deep family connection to the school. What does it mean to you to go out and wear a Purdue uniform one last time? And it means everything. You know, you only get so many times to, to play football and to wear the Purdue uniform. And, you know, some people, they stop playing football at 18. You know, some it goes even longer. Some guys go deep into the league. So, you know, you just can't take moments for granted and you just got to keep going and focus on the next game. George, speaking of family, your brother Yanni is going to be a freshman linebacker on the team this year. Give us a little insight into his game. What can we expect from the next Karloftis? Someone that is tenacious and aggressive and just gets after it on the field. You know, someone that's one of the most aggressive people I've ever seen has that the eye of the tiger, if you will. You know, someone that loves the game and is going to do everything to, in, his, in, his, in his power to make the team win. David and George, you guys clearly have big time NFL futures ahead of you and, and so there's a lot of buzz about you guys heading into this year what's kind of the balancing act is as you think ahead to to what's coming up but focus on the season at hand how do you kind of separate sure. out those things well, well to an answer for David and I, I think both of us right now are looking to, towards defeating Oregon State and that's our only concern 
Yeah, just going off of what George said, uh, just take it uh, one step at a time. Uh, like he said, Oregon State is our first opponent, but I think just as the season progresses, you know, we just take it season by season. So uh, I really just dictates uh, how this season ends for us. Uh, it depends on our future. David, what did you learn from watching Rondell Moore go through the draft process? Uh, I think it's, it's different for everybody. You know, I think if he was healthy, uh, I think he would have been a top 10 pick. But, you know, God had a different plan for him. So the injury came along. So I think uh, him being drafted in the second round was a blessing in the sky because he went to a perfect fit with the Arizona Cardinals with uh, Kyler Murray, uh, D-Hop, Larry Fix, and A.J. Green. So I think everything happens for a reason. Georgia, I want to talk to you really quickly, if we could, about your girlfriend, Kaya Harris. She sure. went through an unbelievable ordeal incredibly inspirational, a near fatal car accident. And we're going to show some pictures uh, again. I mean, remarkable to think of, of where she was. Not only did she survive this, but she came back to compete for Purdue's track and field team. What did her story and her battle teach you? Just that the things that I'm going through in life or, you know, maybe it's like my shoulder hurts just after practice or something like that. It's just, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. You know, she's overcame one of the most difficult obstacles any, out of anyone I've ever seen in triumph. And that just is so inspirational and so motivating to me that, that words can't describe how, first of all, how proud of it I am of her and how, how much that just shows me and everyone around her how great of a you know, how great of a story it is and how much she motivates and inspires us. Uh, it's truly an amazing story, and yeah. I had a chance to watch a, a video. Her parents were talking a little bit about it, and, and she discussed it. It is incredibly moving and certainly would encourage sure. everyone to learn about her story. But certainly, uh, as you speak with her uh, later <laughs> today, please let her know how impressed everyone is and just blown away by, will, by the progress that, that she has made. I want to leave you guys with this. How do you define success for Purdue football this year? Jackson, we'll start with you. I think it's it's in the eyes of who's doing the work, especially like it could be different for every person on the field. You know, it could be winning a Big Ten championship. It could be breaking records. Or it could be how many people that you have an impact on throughout the community. So I think throughout the season it's going to be fun to see where everybody's journey takes them and hopefully it, it ends in the right way. David? Uh, I would have to say overcoming obstacles because uh, throughout the season you're going to be faced with triumphs and I just think how we uh, how we react after getting punched in the face. You know, I just think by the way we react, I think that determines how successful we are. George? For me, it's just finishing games. You know, I think that's a common thing for all of us that's been, you know, our off season for the most part, just finishing games, you know, in that fourth quarter, giving it your all, you know. So I, th I think, you know, if we're going to finish games, I think that, that'll give us a great chance to be successful this year. George Karloff, this is David Bell, Jackson Anthrop. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks Have a great us. year. Thank you. Look forward to watching you guys on the field.